You're listening to Being Autistic. I'm your host, Shelly, and I am a 50-year-old woman sharing my experiences about what it's like to grow up knowing I was different but not knowing why, how I learned I was on the autism spectrum, and what it's like to be autistic. Hello, everyone. In this episode, I'm going to talk about autism throughout your lifetime. So autism changes depending on what phase of life you're in. And this is something most people are not talking about. I have not heard many people talking about this, but autism affects your daily life in very different ways, depending on if you're a toddler, depending on if you're a child, a teenager, um, you know, in your 20s and 30s. And as I'm finding now, it really changes as you go through your, as for women going through perimenopause, which is what I'm in. And so a lot of people wonder, will autism change with age? Will it get worse? Will it get better? What does it look like as you change ages? And that's what I'm going to talk about. Because this is, like I said, I don't think I've heard anybody talk about this. Um, I've, I've heard a lot of people talking about what it's like in adults, but not really anybody that said exactly how it changes in each age group. So let's talk about first when autism first shows up, when people first start noticing or the parents might start noticing changes. So there are a lot of things that happen that can happen, I should say. This is not for everyone. So the things that I'm going to talk about are not across the board because autism is different in everybody. It's even different from males to females. But the majority of children are going to show some signs when it comes to developmental delays or um, just ways that they interact with other people. So they might not do eye contact. They might be really into their in their own little world which is how i was even my whole life really and that's never changed but children that are autistic focus on themselves they're not into other kids as much they might be curious but they're not going to interact with them as much so that's one of the first things that you will notice if a child kind of dives into their own little world and doesn't really show emotions or maybe they do show emotions to the extreme because a lot of autistic people are diagnosed they're misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder and that's you know it's all emotional dysregulation and for me I experienced a lot of delays in learning and that's not going to be for every autistic but many of them will Like I had trouble learning how to ride a bike, tie my shoes, learning how to do math. (laughs) Math was really hard for me. And just the whole thing with homework, going to school. And that's where that age group will start to show different changes with autism. So when you start going to school, of course, you're going to be forced to spend time with other children other strangers and that is a time in an autistic's life where things can get worse they usually will because it's a change and autistics don't like change but on the on the flip side of that they do like routine so if a child does happen to like school they will like the routine of knowing what they have to do every day having a schedule but then the social aspects cause problems for most autistic people. So they will withdraw from the groups. Um, When a child is in other groups of children, they're not, like I said before, it's going to be a focus on their internal world. They're going to focus more on objects, not as much on people. And they're going to, as they're learning about life and growing as a person, different things can happen as far as autism, they might realize that they struggle with tactile things, like they don't want to have certain materials for clothing, they might find noise stressful, they might find bright lights hard to deal with, and that's, you know, the sensitivity thing is a big issue for a lot of autistic people. And so, as you get older, as a child, as a, just in regular life, 
your situation will change. So your environments will change. And this goes for if you move, you know, my family moved when I was 10 and I didn't really like it, but I adapted because I actually did prefer the new house better because it was in the country. So I had a huge yard, very big yard with a a big um, cornfield behind it so there was no neighbors behind there was only one neighbor on one side but it was far enough away so yeah if you have if, if a child moves to a new location it could be good or bad and that could exacerbate the autism or it could make it better so in my case I think it made it better because like I said I moved to a, a more calming location and so also throughout someone's life it's going to make the autism traits either get worse or get better depending on the environment that you change to or you know this can go for jobs as well and this is why I change jobs a lot because if one environment isn't working if it's exacerbating my autistic traits I will you know change jobs and that's something to keep in mind as well so back to the phases of life um, when you're a child, like I said, yeah, you're going to start noticing different things in their life. And the whole thing with friends, that's a big topic that I actually did an episode on just how friends were when I was a child. I think I did an episode. I might have done an episode on friends in general, but I think I did one also on going through like the grade school ages um, where, you know, you're, you're, you're learning about what friends are. And that's something I struggled so much with that. I, I was bullied a lot. I didn't have many long lasting close friendships. I had some that lasted a couple years, but that was all. And so that's something that you'll notice with autistic children is the friendships won't last very long, most likely. And like I said, they're gonna spend a lot of time alone. That's a, th a central theme. And then when a child becomes a teenager, then lots of things happen. So there's going to be the whole issue of sexuality, which is, you know, autistic people are still able to be different types of sexual orientations. It's not like they're all not going to be sexual. There's a variety. It's a spectrum. Like, you know, the the sexual spectrum is pretty wide and all autistic people are going to be somewhere on that on that spectrum as well for me personally though it wasn't an it wasn't really a thing in my life i didn't really want anything to do with it all i wanted to do was listen to music and ride my bike and you know <laughs> just basic things very simple basic things I didn't want to get involved in other people as much like I had some close friends temporarily but I didn't really get involved in dating and that's a separate subject as well that I I think I have an episode on dating and relationships and that did not even start for me until I was in my tw my mid-20s so as a teenager the autistic teenager is going to struggle probably with you know body changes most people do struggle with puberty and autistic people I feel struggle worse with things so they are gonna probably have a harder time going through puberty because here's something that I've noticed about autism it's a common theme for many autistic people that they feel like they're, they feel very childlike, and I still feel this way, even at 50. It's just a way of living that's simple, and it's, it's all about joy, you know, f finding joy and experiencing the things that you love, and that's a childlike trait. When you become an adult, it's all about jobs and bills and responsibilities and obligations, and that is something that autistic people don't do well with. So... When a teenage autistic person is struggling with those things, it can become apparent. They might be, you know, on the flip side, they might actually be more sexual. They might want to be sexual in order to feel close to someone because autistic people have 
a lot of relationship and friendship problems, being close with others. And so they might turn to sex to feel close with others, or in my case, they might avoid it altogether, and they might just see it as an awkward, weird, foreign thing, which is how I felt about it. Um, autistic uh, teenagers will also show signs of, uh, like for me, I, I kind of, not rejected, but I, I really pushed back against you know, the, the whole thing with when you're a teenager, you are taught that you have to choose a career, you have to plan for your future, and that was something that I pushed back against because it didn't feel right to me. I didn't want a job, I didn't want a career, I just wanted to focus on things I enjoyed. And so that can be a time in someone's life where the autistic traits could exacerbate. They might retreat into their own world even deeper and a lot of teenagers do that they get involved in video games they get involved in talking to people online you know using a computer is one of the biggest <laughs> things with autistic people like that's where we find our interests that's where we find other people that are interested in our interests that's where we escape to you know that's how we listen to music it's just if you notice your autistic teenager, or maybe you were like this as a teenager, being drawn to the computer, that's that's a pretty big sign that, that you are autistic or the person is autistic and it's a way that the autistic traits come out when you can see what they're gravitating towards. And like I said, when you go from that transition from being a child to an adult, it's a very awkward time and it's a time of change and autistics don't like change so it's just tumultuous it's turmoil it's and it can be worse for some than others some autistic teenagers might not have as much problem with it but some might and then you know you would think that the autistic person that's in their 20s would start to become more good <laughs> at being an adult, but that doesn't often happen. In fact, I've spoken to a lot of middle-aged adults like myself that are still not good at being an adult. And so that can vary, that can change over the years for different people. You might find that in your 20s you still want to act like you're 10. You might find that being an adult, you, you might find a job that actually doesn't cause your autistic traits to get worse. You might find that your environment is conducive to your autistic traits as well, which will make life very smooth. And like I said at the beginning of this podcast episode, it's going to be different for everybody depending on your environment, your situation, because the autistic traits kind of fluctuate throughout the life, throughout your experiences throughout your situations and your environments. And that's why it's crucial for an autistic person to find what works for them and strive towards that. And I know that's a lifelong journey. It has been for me. It's hard. Life is hard when you're forced to do things you don't want to do. There's not many good options. The world is not designed for us. So it's a struggle to find that equilibrium of where you can you can live a nice smooth life <laughs> and it's not easy and I don't talk to very many autistic people that have an easy time with it even you know even when they get into their 30s and 40s where the neurotypical person is pretty much set you know they've got their family they've got their career and they can kind of relax and just enjoy life. And it, it's not really like that for most autistic people because many of us have never had a family, have never found a decent career that can support us. And so a lot of us struggle for a long time. And I'm even struggling. And a lot, I've even talked to a lot of people that are my age that are even doing worse off than me. They are struggling with homelessness, with health issues, with having no friends, with barely having any money, living in poverty, struggling to make money, struggling to be happy, struggling to even keep themselves alive because 
Autistic people struggle with anxiety and depression. It's two of the most common things that autistic people have. And so like this makes everything worse. And so let's move on now to the next phase of life. Let's say that you have gotten through your 20s and 30s and now you're starting to maybe if you're a woman going through perimenopause, which starts in your 40s for most women, that is a like it's it's like reverse puberty. <laughs> it's another hormonal time of your life and that means more changes for the autism person, the autistic person. I'm going to say what happened for me. The anxiety got worse, the depression got worse, physical symptoms that are just from perimenopause would cause more anxiety and depression and just the fact that, you know, you're finally not finally, <laughs> you're at a stage in your life where you have to think about your mortality. Like I'm no longer able to have children or through the transition of that, it's kind of a long transition, but that's a strange time of your life where, you know, you're grappling with a lot of existential things and it can be depressing for anybody. Anybody, you know, the whole midlife crisis thing, it's a real thing, but for autistic people, it can be worse if you don't have a family, if you don't have a career, if you're struggling with your mental health. So yeah, menopause and perimenopause, even for men, the middle age time can be hard. You know, you're still grappling with your mortality. And for someone that loves childish, not childish, childlike things, behaviors and activities, that's going to be hard, you know, and, and I can say for me, my favorite things in life are music, hula hooping, dancing, being out in nature, riding a bike, swinging on the swing set. You know, those are not things that someone that's almost in their last phase of life should be doing. I mean, so society says, <laughs> but, but I say, do it. <laughs> I say, live your life how you want. And it's, it's going to be hard because you're going to come into people that judge you. And that's another cause for anxiety and depression when you're not accepted. I mean, most neurotypical people don't accept autistic people anyway. And then as we get older, we are fitting in even less because we don't usually have grandchildren. We don't usually have, you know, a, a nice house with a lot of money and the things that most retired people have. So at every stage of life, we don't fit in. And again, I'm going to say this again, this is not 100% across the board. There are going to be some autistic people who have gotten lucky. They have a great career that gives them a lot of money and security. They've got a great family and their autism does not influence their life to the extent that it does others. And also, it's going to depend on your level. So there's three levels of autism and it didn't used to be like that. It used to be where you either had severe autism or you were high functioning in other words, Asperger's syndrome. So it's also going to depend on that. And that's, that's a whole different subject in itself. But, um, most likely the more support you need, the harder life changes are going to be for you, especially since autistic people don't do well with changes in the first place. Another thing that I wanted to mention was if you unmask during your life at any point, it's going to change how autism affects you as well. So when I was young, I focused a lot on my inner world and I also um, had problems with social things, you know, friend groups, relationships. And so I masked a lot in order to try to make those friends and relationships work. And I also did a lot of drinking in order to talk to people. And so that was one phase of my life where autism affected me heavily because I needed to mask heavily in order to get by. I also noticed as I 
you know, now that I'm older, I noticed that when I was younger, I had a lot more energy for, um, for th just anything. You know, I didn't need as much downtime. I also didn't have so many bad experiences with things because I was able to handle them a lot better. I had more mental capacity. And you know, you might have heard of the spoon theory. I never really had too many problems when I was younger, when it came to the, you know, having spoons. I always felt like I had, I mean, I, I still needed to recharge. I still needed my alone time, but it was nowhere near as bad as it is now. And this also pertains to um, masking in that w once you start to unmask, it's going to change things. It's going to make different parts of your autism worse or better. And for me, when I got older, I started to notice more sensitivity issues. And I don't know if everybody's like this. I've never actually asked anyone, but I've noticed that sensory issues are really bad for me now where they were not so bad for me before. And also on the flip side of that, as I get older, I've also noticed that my social problems aren't as bad now as they were when I was young. And that might be a result of different things. It might be a result of just going through life, getting older, picking up, you know, habits of getting along with people easier, learning how to be an adult a little bit, you know. So I think in some ways, as you get older, as an autistic person, some things get better, some things get easier. But then on the flip side, like I said, some things, some things get worse. I now have way less energy for dealing with things that are not good for me. I have way less um, energy for activities in general. I need more downtime. And I've even found that it's hard for me to do um, more than one thing a day if it's leaving the house. Like, let's say I have to get groceries. I want to get groceries and then I want to come home and rest. I don't want to have other appointments. I don't want to hang out with friends or family. You know, it's one thing a day and that's how my spoons work. I have spoons for one thing and the, the more I do, the more time I need to recover from that and I've also noticed irritability issues, and that could also come with age for, for females in perimenopause too. That's another symptom of that is irritability. And, you know, if, if you're young still, then hopefully you don't have issues with mood changes too much because as you get older, those are going to get worse. And yeah, so basically what I this this little segment here is all about how things have changed for me different better and worse as I got older so some things about autism can get better as you get older some things can get worse so I really hope that you got some benefit out of this episode it was a little short one because you know it really changes a lot depending on your like I said your situation your environment but just know that when it comes to age and aging your autism could get better but it could get worse um, and it's really hard to tell it's hard to predict it's it's one of those things where you really have to balance your life with things that you love and that's where the hard part comes in so, like I said, yeah, it can get better, it can get worse, depending on so many things. And just know that life, <laughs> life is a roller coaster for most people, and it's, it's kind of helpful to know as an autistic person that your ups and downs are probably going to be higher and lower than most. I don't know about you, but I feel like when things are going good for me, I almost feel on top of the world. But when things are going bad for me, I feel like I don't even want to live anymore. But I know that that's just a temporary feeling. And overall, it's it's a ride. You know, life is a ride. <laughs> and I always think of that quote by, um, oh, now I'm forgetting his name. He was a comedian that 
died and he was one of my favorite bill hicks that's his name he said life is a ride or a game maybe i'm i'm totally screwing up this quote but you know life is a ride and you just have to buckle up and experience the highs and lows throughout your entire life as an autistic person you're gonna have so many highs and lows depending on your situation depending on your age depending on so many things so I hope this episode was helpful for you. Thank you so much for listening and I will catch you again in next week's episode.